Okay, uh, we're going to look at RC circuits. So these are circuits that have a resistor and a capacitor. And uh, we're going to buy two things. We're going to worry about charging it up and then discharging it. And how this happens is, is really interesting and really important to understand how to go about this. I'm going to leave some of the calculus and derivation of some of the formulas to someone else. Uh, but let me describe it conceptually how you want to think about it. So here we have, it, have an RC circuit. So notice I have my battery, right? So this is my positive side of the battery, my negative side of the battery. And I have a switch here. The switch can be in two positions. So right now the switch is in the up position. And this connects my, um, my battery to my resistor and my capacitor and the return charge. So, so the thing I want to think about is when I first close this switch, when I first push this switch into this position, right, what happens is, well, my electrons start flowing this way, but we're worried about, we're going to think about positive charge, so my current starts flowing this way. And initially, right, there's no charge here on my, uh, on my capacitor, so that first electron, or that first positive charge, that first positive charge travels as if there was a wire here and there was no capacitor. So this is just true for the first charge, right? So, but that first charge passes through my resistor, and gets to my capacitor as if there was no capacitor there. Right? Over time, right, I build up a positive charge here, and I build up a negative charge here, and then eventually, right, there's no flow anymore. There's no current that flows and no more charge that builds up. If there's no resistor, this happens like instantaneously, right? Speed of light, right? So there's no resistor here, then bam, I get a charge here, and yeah, it's not so interesting. When I put a resistor in there, it slows everything down. So that's the fun thing that we're going to look at. Uh, let's look at charging of this. So the important thing to recognize is that, that Ohm's law is always going to be true. So I can always use Ohm's law here. So right, IR equals V. Um, but what I'm going to do is uh, because my current is going to be changing, right? I'm going to use a lowercase i. So I'm going to use a lowercase i. My resistance is not going to change. My voltage is going to change over time. Right? But if I know my current, I can figure out my voltage. So Ohm's law is always going to be true. So my current is going to be less. That means I'm going to have less of a voltage drop. And eventually I get to, to no current, which means there's no voltage drop. So let me think about a loop rule. Is the loop rule still true? Well, hmm. if I have my loop, so here's my loop. It's going to be going around this circuit and back to where it started from. So the sum of my voltages needs to add up to zero. I gain five volts here. That first charge, this acts like a wire. So my first charge passing through, this is going to have a voltage drop of 5 volts. So that first charge passing through, right, my voltage is going to be 5 volts across this resistor. My, re my resistor has 20 ohms. And I can calculate the initial current, right? So I'll call this my initial current that passes through that resistor is, uh, is just going to be uh, V over R, right? So um, V over R or 5 over 20, uh, I'm going to call it 1 quarter, and 1 quarter of an amp. Right. My last charge that passes through, right, after it's come to the steady state, right, my last charge goes through it, I no longer have current here. But my loop rule is still true. So remember now I have a voltage gain of 5 volts going across here. There's no current, so I have no voltage drop in the resistor. But I still have now my capacitor behaving like a capacitor where it's fully charged. I have a voltage drop across my capacitor. So my loop rule is really powerful, and it's going to always be true. So even in the middle there, whatever voltage drop I have here plus the voltage drop here is going to add up to equal the voltage gain that happens to the battery. Um, and Ohm's law is always going to be true. I'll just have to be careful about the time points. So those two, those two things are still going to be the same. So as I go through, uh, and there's there's a for, uh, there's a derivation of this is uh, is entertaining. But and let me jump ahead a little bit. That that uh, if I uh, uh, if I use current and I, I take uh, derivatives of time with uh, for current, that I can get to an equation that says my the voltage across the capacitor is going to equal the voltage across my source times 1 minus E. Yep, so uh, here we go. Here's the explanation for this. Uh, e is the that irrational number to the negative T. That's time divided by R times C. So this is the magnitude of my resistor in ohms times the magnitude of my capacitor in farads. Right? And this is what we call the time constant. So, so notice what, so negative, so um, I could rewrite this, right? So this is the same as saying Vs times 1 minus 1 over E to the T over RC, right? So when 
my time is equal to one time constant. So when, when time is equal to R times C, right, I'm dividing, well, I'm dividing R times C by R. So you got to get E to the power of one. So I'm subtracting uh, one over E from this. So, uh, so the time constant is sort of a convenient point. So we can say after one time constant, we'll have, you know, we'll have our, our voltage minus one over E. Uh, at my second time point, I'm going to have my, uh, my voltage at my source times one minus one over E squared and, uh, and so on. And so what I end up with is I, is I end up a, uh, with a charging graph for voltage. And we can look at a charging graph for, um, uh, for current as well. It, it looks like this. So, so on the top is showing the, um, whoops, that's discharging. Let's go to charging. Uh, charging. Here we go. Charging. Uh, charging capacitor. So, so the voltage across my capacitor uh, is, going to be, is going to be increasing in in this decay curve, right? So I'm going to be, uh, I've got on my x-axis, I'm indicating the time points. So after one time constant, right? So this is R times C for that circuit. For one time constant, uh, I'll be about, uh, what, well, 0.63 of my total voltage. After two time constants, I'll be closer. After four or five time constants, we consider the capacitor to be fully charged. Um, yeah, you know, uh, the, the opposite is going to be true for the current, right? So my initially my current is going to be very high, and then at the end my current is going to be zero, and so this is a corresponding sort of drop in in uh, in current that can be uh, can be determined as well. And again, we'll we can plot this according to time constants, uh, which is going to be R times C, right? So for different capacitors and different resistors, I can still get the same shape of the curve. Just the the value that's on the um, on the y axis or the value that's on the x axis axis is going to be changing. Right? So this is how we charge up a capacitor. And uh, if we do it if we do it uh, uh, with a large resistor, it's going to take more time. If we do it with a smaller resistor, it's going to take less time. If we do it with a large capacitor, it's going to take more time. If we do it with a smaller capacitor, it takes less time. And and hopefully that makes sense to you that uh, if we slow down the the if we use a big resistor to slow down current, that it's going to take longer to, to charge something up. And if I have like a big uh, big capacitor, it's got big plates, right? It can take a lot of charge. It's going to take a long time to charge that up. Anyway. Um, Anyway, I encourage you to uh, to look at the AP videos for uh, for how to derive this, and uh, that was one of the questions that actually was on this year's AP test was uh, it was in deriving the uh, the time constant. So it's worthwhile understanding how to do that, but that's another video. Um, okay, so uh, so that's charging. Let's uh, let's look at discharging. So I'm going to do it sort of the, the, the same thing now, but um, I'm going to I'm going to look at it in reverse. So now I'm going to take the same circuit. Right, so now I've charged this up. So I've got a positive charge here, I've got a negative charge here, and I'm going to flip this so that now it's connected here. And what's going to happen, right? My electrons are going to flow to my positive side, or my charge, uh, as my current, as I describe it, is going to flow to the opposite side. And when I first close that, right, I've got this voltage here. Right? My loop rule is always going to be true, right? So if I, as I go around the loop, that uh, my voltage needs to add up to zero. So I start with a full voltage drop here, of five volts. So I'm going to my first electron that passes through here is going to cause a voltage drop through this resistor of five volts. But notice that I'm destroying my voltage as we go, right? So my voltage is dropping in my whole system, right? So at any at any point, my loop rule is true, and any point Ohm's law is true. Um, but in this case, uh, my voltage is, is going to be dropping as we go through it. So I need a, a different equation, and uh, that equation is, uh, is going to look like this, which is going to be that the voltage at the capacitor is going to be equal to the, uh, the voltage, the, my original voltage, so the voltage at my source, times E to the power of negative T over RC. So notice what I'm doing. So negative power, so I'm dividing by E to the T over RC. And again, notice RC, so... Whenever my uh, my numerator time is equal to the magnitude of r times c, then I have a whole number as an exponent, and it makes it easier to sort of conceptualize what's happening. So that's why we say say we say the um, time constant is uh, is r c, which means it's just a convenient magnitude for the time to be.
Again, uh, these are things showed by my voltage across the capacitor, my original voltage across the, the supply, the time elapsed since the removal of the supply, and then RC is the time constant. Also, it is, in fact, the resistance times the capacitance. So, so let's look at the, uh, the, the shapes of the curves when I discharge something, right? So, so when I discharge something, Right. Again, my voltage is going to drop to zero. And so the capacitor, if I look at the capacitor, the voltage is going to drop after one time constant. It's going to drop by two thirds, right, or one over E. Uh, and after two time constants, it's going to drop by more, one over E squared. Um, so it's going to uh, so decay like this. Um, notice the, the current is uh, is going to start out in the opposite direction, right? So notice that when we charged it up, the current uh, was going from the from the positive side of the battery to the negative side of the battery. Now the current is going in the opposite direction, right? So we've charged it up and now it's undoing itself. So it's starting out as a negative current. My negative current uh, is just in case it's going in the opposite direction, but it's going to return to zero, right? So I'm destroying my charges as I do this. Uh, my charges are equilibrating and uh, my current is going to return to zero and after one time constant it's it's gone uh, about two-thirds of the way to uh, to zero and uh, and so on so uh, important things about RC circuits so the time constant is a really handy thing these two equations are not given to you uh, but they, uh, they it's helpful to know how to get to them and that's another video I encourage you to watch that one um, the uh, importance of this is understanding what happens with the first and the last electrons, so our first and the last charge getting to and leaving a capacitor. So I'm charging up a capacitor. It acts like a wire for that first charge, right? It has no resistance. It's just, it absorbs that charge right away. Um, and uh, eventually it's going to stop accepting charges. And when I discharge it, that first charge leaving uh, is going to take full advantage of that voltage. And that voltage is going to change as it discharges. So anyway, uh, RC circuits kind of fun to play with and uh, it's a convenient way of making like a timing circuit. So if you have something that has a capacitor and a, uh, and a resistor, you can, get, um, uh, you can get charge to flow through there in predictable rates. And that's one way to keep track of small amounts of time. Uh, anyway, I hope this is helpful. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.